All right, let's greet y'all this morning in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. We just uh, still the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness, and for your mercy. We just ask your blessing upon us today, Father, as we look to your word. Father, we just ask that you fill us with your spirit, give us wisdom and understanding. Help us take heart your way, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, again, that you would help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to uh, open our Bibles to, Ma to Luke chapter 14. Verse 7. And he began speaking a parable to the invited guest when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for someone more distinguished than you may, be, may have been invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this man, and then, in disgrace, you proceed to occupy the last place. But when you are invited, go and recline at the last place, so that when the one who has invited you comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will have honor in the sight of all who are at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. I want to just uh, take from this the, the simple principle of the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And just relate that to our lives and thinking about eternity. Thinking about uh, what it truly means to follow the Lord. A lot of times we have the idea that <laughs> we need to really be doing something the highest place. Just like this man came to a wedding and Jesus was noticing that how they were picking out the places and everyone was looking to find the best place and he he told us don't take the best place in case that was reserved for someone else I mean how embarrassing would it be to us to go go someplace and say oh here I've got a good seat and then someone comes and say oh you don't belong here you need to go back there and that's uh, not a very nice thing. I mean, I don't know how many times on the airplane, I've, how many times I've flown on an airplane and I go find my seat and get everything all situated and then someone comes up and say, says, uh, I think you're sitting in my seat. 
And well, I, I, I know what seat I'm supposed to sit in and you look at your ticket and you're supposed to be across the aisle or you're supposed to be over against the window or someone and it, so you've just got to move everything there everybody's standing there waiting for you and they're just watching you and you just feel like foolish and but you get all moved and get all settled in and it all works out but that's what jesus is talking about and it's amazing how sure that we are that we are in the right seat and they've got to be wrong and that's the point I want us to try to understand today of how sure we are that we're, we are in the right seat. Usually the person that is so sure that they are in the right seat is the one that's in the wrong seat. And that's what Jesus is trying to warn us about, trying to show us today that how to prepare ourselves in our lives so that we will be found if in a wrong seat. Sometimes I've been in a plane and I've got my seat and the, the person that's taking charge of the, of the getting everybody seated will come back and say, hey, we've got a reserved seat up in the first class that we want you to come up here and you can come up and set up there in the first class somebody didn't show up or something and you're next on the list and here you are in the back and then they bring you and you get to ride in the first class seat this time and that's a whole different ball game than being embarrassed because you're sitting in the wrong seat you just were where you were supposed to be and someone came and brought you up higher. Which will it be better on eternity when we stand before the Lord if we're thinking we belong and we find that we're in the wrong seat? Or if we just take the low seat and the Lord comes and says, here, you come up front. You come up closer. You belong up here. Shouldn't that be the way we want it? We're sometimes so worried about where everybody else's seat is. We got it all figured out. I know that I've been sitting there and I see things going on, confusion going on, and I thought, boy, shouldn't people know what seat they're supposed to be sitting in? And you just worried, you know, they're just up there and there's a big commotion going on and people are fussing and fighting and just, that's so dumb. Why don't they just figure out what seat they ought to be sitting in? And you got it all figured out when you see it. And then someone comes up and says, uh, I think you're in my seat. And now you're the center of attention and the dumb one. But all the while, while you, you were sitting in the wrong seat, you were looking back there at that mess that's going on up at the front and all the confusion, just thinking how dumb that person must be sitting in the wrong seat. Is this the first time they've ever flown? What's going on? They don't know nothing. And you can really figure it out whenever it's a few seats ahead of you. And then you're sitting in the wrong seat. It's so easy for us to be so concerned about what everybody else should be doing. It's so easy to think that I could be doing so much better at that job or that idea or that thought and be sitting in the wrong seat the whole time yourself. What good does it do to realize what they should be doing up there in those seats in front of you where all the confusion are? What does it matter? about how well you have that figured out. 
<coughs> when you're sitting in the wrong seat. This is a big deal. It seems kind of little, kind of silly, but you know, the kingdom of heaven is made up not of the big deals that we think, but of the little deals. It's the little things that make the big things work. Without the little things, the big things will not function. And if everyone will take their part and do their little thing, then all the rest of it will smooth, will flow so much easier. One of the boys mentioned just picking up trash at the job or just closing a gate. Those are just little things. But if nobody picked up the trash, or yeah, if nobody just picked up the trash and somebody that was wanting to maybe sell their cattle or do whatever there, they came along and they seen trash laying everywhere. They just decided they wasn't even gonna do, that, do business with that place because it's trashy because no one even took the time to do the little thing. What if, oh, that gate needs latched, but I'm not going to worry about that. I've got something. I've got to go do something big over here. So you run after and go do the big thing. Then pretty soon somebody sends cows down the alley and they push through the gate that you didn't last and they get all mixed up with a whole bunch of others. And now you're spending time, a whole bunch of people having to sort everything back out. Was it a little thing? Or was it a big thing? Well, all the people that had to stop everything they were doing and go back and fix your little mess thinks it's a big thing. Problem is, is, you probably still think it was a little thing. And they ought to be so upset about what they have to go do and fix. It's the little things that are going to determine whether we're disciples of Jesus or not. Everybody likes to do the big things. Everybody likes to be the big shot. Everybody likes to be able to do the best. But it's the little things that make that thing work. Jesus, I just think about him and Paul. They could have accomplished great, great things in this world. But they lost their lives. They appeared like failures to those all around them. Jesus said, What does it matter if you gain this world and lose your own soul? What does it matter if you get the big thing on this earth but miss the little thing that God wants you to do? Sometimes some people are called to do the big thing. Some people have the talent to do the big thing. And that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. But the one doing the little thing 
often thinks that what they're doing is not important and they begin to grumble and complain about the person doing the big thing. There's a, a little story about a man that's, that's uh, working cattle and he's having to catch the calves after the guy ropes them. He's catching the calves and he's down there wrestling them in the mud, trying to turn them up on their side and then has to hold them down while they they brand them and, and give them the shots and everything and he's just holding this calf and fighting it all muddy and dirty and he, he looks up at the guy on the horse and said, boy, I'd like to be up there on that horse. He's got it made. He's, he's just got it made up there. I'd like to be up there on the horse. And the guy on the horse is sitting there and he's, he's uh, been breathing all the dust and just slopping around and got rope burns from having to hold the calves and, and just sore from sitting there all day and just, just riding in. The horse is just giving him all kinds of trouble and he looks over on the, at the, on the chute or on the fence and the guy's there with all the paperwork counting the calves and counting all that and making sure everything's getting done. And he said, boy, I wish I had his job. And the guy on the fence is doing all the book work and he's just, oh, he's just having a hard time keeping everything straight because nobody's doing what they're supposed to do and everything's going crazy. And he looks at the guy out there in the pickup that owns the ranch driving around. He says, boy, I wish I had his job. And the guy in the pickup that owns the ranch is trying to figure out how to make all the bills and get everything paid and how to get everybody paid and make sure everything's done on time and people are calling him and he's looking at the guy out there wrestling that calf in the mud he said boy that guy's got it made because they're not content to be what they're supposed to be Contentment is great gain. Just being content to be in the place that God has put you. Paul said that whether I'm rich, poor, hungry, full, clothed, naked, it don't matter. I've learned to be content in whatsoever state God has put me in. You know, if a guy can learn to be content at the lowest station that he can live in, what more is there? Moving up the ladder doesn't change anything. People still have problems on the next rung, and the next rung, and the next rung. Learn to be content with the one you belong in. And be happy with the, one, with the guy that's able to do the next job, or the next, or the next. One of the biggest things, the biggest tools there is in this world is discontentment with what you are. I mean, one of the most troubling things, one of the things that cause trouble the most in anything is to find someone with a burr under their saddle and then just push that burr just a little bit. Causes discontentment. And then there's anger. And then there's a riot. Someone that's been done wrong. And you can aggravate that just a little bit and agitate that just a little bit. And pretty soon everybody's all up in arms about how you've not been treated right. The world does it every day. That's why there's 
racial divides in the world because somebody says because I'm black I'm not treated right or somebody says because I'm white I'm not treated right or I'm an Indian and everybody's picking on me or whatever you want to whatever you want to put in there I'm handicapped I don't do this right I don't do that right and everybody's picking on me And the devil can take that and just cause all kinds of riots. That's where wars get started. Groups, nations divide because of some kind of injustice that someone's just nursing and fanning and growing until there's got to be a fight. But if we just learn to love the place that we're in because that's where God put us and that's where God needs us right now. Places may change. There may be a time to move up. But the problem is, is you'll have to learn to be content with that place too. You'll have to learn to be content with that place too. Happy is the man that can be content in whatever place God puts him. With whatever situation God puts him in. Take the low road. That's the path to the high road. If you learn how to walk the low road, the high road will be a breeze. The best way to learn anything that you're doing is to start at the very bottom and learn the very basics the best way you can. Remembering that as you do those little things that that's making the bigger things work. first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Jesus lost his life so that he could find it. Jesus said if we lose our lives, we will find it. But if we find our lives, we will lose it. How sure we are that we're in the right seat, only to find I was in the wrong one. It's so easy. It's so easy to think that we are in the right seat. Usually, the sure we are about something, the sure we are we're wrong. The sure it is that we're wrong. Especially when it comes to getting a little bit of pride about thinking that we've got it all in order. You just about guarantee that you're wrong. It's about nothing else thinking that you've got it in order. Makes it wrong. Anyway. 
Well, Lord bless you.